another it's like a bizarro version of Wolf Run yep, in a way. It's another Wolf Run deck, just not the uh, not the same version right. as we're used to seeing. So, so Marco's Ink Moth Nexus and Sean plays a uh, Sea Chrome Coast. Yep. So Wow. So Mark doesn't have a green mana, which is definitely not what he wants. He he, he wants green mana. Yeah. Yeah. So At Sean this takes. Point, he's yeah. got he's got uh, colorless and a red like his one of his two mountains. Yeah. And Sean's got to like that. Uh, Sean passes with two mana open. Hopefully he's sitting on like a mana leak or he's just gonna think twice. Uh, but uh, yeah, definitely when the the pretty much mono green player doesn't have a green. Wow. And he still doesn't have a uh, a green land. But uh, he's going to try to play a Palladium Mirror, which gets met by a Mana Leap. So, Sean's definitely in the control seat right here. He's got he's got all his lands that he needs, and Mark pretty much has nothing in play of relevance. All right, so I kind of feel like Mark just drew a green. But maybe he didn't. Yeah, I, I hope so for his sake at this yeah. point. If not, he's definitely... Oh, okay, so he just passes the turn. He doesn't even try to get in one with the Ink Moth Nexus. What What do you think he's playing around here? Yeah, maybe he's concerned. Like, yeah, he, I mean, like he has no instant that he, that he's, right, that he can no, play. I'm not sure. It's interesting. And, and you know, there's no Condemn anymore. I mean, the only thing is Dismember. Right. But, I don't know. That, that, that's kind of weird. I mean, if you're so if you're so screwed, you might as well just try to be like, all right, the only shot I can win is just give him 10 yeah, poisons. You know what I'm saying? Right. I'm, I'm with you on that. I think... Uh, but him just sitting there doing nothing for two turns in a row is not going to help at all. Because it gives Sean the opportunity to play thing twice, flash it back, you know? Yeah, he's, uh, Sean is drawing tons of cards yeah. here. and um, I mean, I can see Sean just, just slamming down like a Gideon or something right yeah, now. Which yeah, he's, 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 wow. got, he's got Land I think Gideon. He just drew, yeah. yeah, Land Gideon. I know, he's going to go Land Ratchet, Ratchet Bomb. Bomb. I don't understand. I do not understand how people play control decks. Just play, what is that guy going to do? Play a Gideon, you win the game. Well, maybe because Sean is not familiar with what sh what Mark is playing, maybe he's a little bit less. Uh, uh, personally, inclined. I would not be worried if my opponent had two colorless lands in the mountain. <laughs> you know. Well, the other thing is, if you if you're gonna play main deck Ratchet Bomb, playing it early is the time to play it, I guess. Why doesn't and he put a? Uh, there's a Druidic Satchel. Why did he put a counter on the Ratchet Bomb? That's a good question. I didn't see him activate that. Maybe he's just waiting for information. Yeah. So there's I, a, is that the Copper Mirror, mirror or the Palladium Mirror? One of those mirrors. Yeah. So he uses a satchel and he hits a ratchet bomb, which means that he gains two life, which is kind of irrelevant. And now he's going to put a counter on the ratchet bomb. Uh, I don't know. If I was playing in Sean's seat, Mark would have been at eight life already, I think. Gideon would have been out there for like two turns. Yeah. Um. For everybody at home, I'm going to give you guys advice about playing control. When your opponent has no lands, beat them down quick. That, I don't know. That's what I do. You got to. Yeah, I mean, you want to capitalize on the yeah. fact that they are not running very well at this point. Yeah, I feel like in life, people always think the other person has it, but in reality, nobody has it. Yeah, it's, in, it's in one anything of those you things. do, in magic, in poker, in, in work, in anything, they never have it. One of the things that there's a Viridian emissary from Mark. Yeah. Uh, actually, able to hit green mana off of the copper mirror. Um, but. And Druidic Satchel activation sees Snapcaster Mage yeah. gives Sean a 1-1. Um, okay. One of the things that I try to think of like while I'm playing is bluff and call their bluff. Yeah. So I'm going to try to bluff that I have it. And yeah. I'm going to I'm going to pretend they never do. Yeah. And it's just it's and it's usually obvious when they do have it because right. it's so rare that somebody actually has it. Whatever it is, it's so rare they have it that you know when they do have it. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh it's definitely I mean. Bluffing mana leak is good. Sure, yeah. Calling yeah. somebody's bluff, make yeah. them have a mana leak is good yeah. too. I think so. Yeah. There's a there's a sapperling there, an actual. All right, uh, and now. Like, so ratchet bomb is going to destroy the copper mirror and the, the emissary. Yeah. So he's going to give uh, give Mark access to green now. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't oh, even he that already good had though. access to green, so in this way he just gets a forest instead of a. a yeah, creature. but he does it on his upkeep because it comes to play tapped. Yeah. But in reality, that Ratchet Bomb wasn't even... Like, some people at home might think, wow, two for one, but it's not. It's only a two for two. It, well, yeah, it was... Uh, uh, essentially, you know what I'm saying? Right, or, he traded his Ratchet Bomb... a one for one. Right, it was, yeah. it was more like... It was a Ratchet Bomb for, for a Copper Mirror. Right. Because the Emissary just got a Forest anyway. Exactly. But, uh... Hello? We're going to see how good the Druidic Satchel is here. So. All right, so Mark draws a Forest. And... I, yeah. So he, he plays out a Rampant Growth. 
I mean, Sean should just let that resolve. Unless he... I mean, he does have a Snapcaster Mage. So he could have Snapcastered and... Uh, Manalik. And Manalik, yeah. Yeah, at this point, it looks like Sean's content to let Mark... Develop his mana? Yeah, develop. Which may not be the best idea, but... Is that really of... Kenny Adams on back of that... that uh, uh, yeah, it is. I've yeah? seen the actual Yeah, picture. I saw it. Yeah, yeah. All right, so Sean hits a land. So Sean's up to eight lands right now. He uses the Satchel once again. And he draws a second Snapcaster Mage. Swings in for one. So Mark goes down to 19. That one guy, like, looked at me. He's, like, playing his match. Maybe we're talking to that for that guy. <laughs> <laughs> I hope not. All right, so finally Gideon comes down. And it's going to go up to eight. One of the plays that, uh, that Mike Flores mentioned about druidic satchel is activating it at the end of your opponent's turn and if you see a snapcaster activating it again yeah. during your upkeep to get a double double dude out of it you know you get two, well i mean uh, if you want to do if you want if yeah, you want you, the extra guy yeah you can kind of control what you actually want right yeah all right so warm coil is going to be met by a dissipate so and yeah, mark attempts to get yeah some power on the board and here comes the bird <laughs> Birds of Paradise for Mark, so, all right, so Mark's yeah. got plenty of mana. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Sean's in complete uh, control of this game. All he has to do is sit on both his Snapcaster Mages, uh, keep a, a Bastion for six with Gideon, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much game. Because you could just go Snapcaster Mage for this spade, Snapcaster Mage for this spade. Um, Does he have well, double dissipate? No, yeah, uh, uh, or Madalik. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Madalik at this spade, yeah. Yeah, he's in he's in good shape right here. Um, kind of depending on what Mark plays. Mark can play. Uh, play around the mana leak with something oh actually he doesn't have Thrun so he's got how much mana does he have he could play a batter skull uh, and still have mana leak mana. yeah but I mean Sean could just dissipate like what, whatever the first one is right Sean could either mana leak or dissipate accordingly and you know so and I mean plus Sean has like Satchel he still has Gideon yeah so it looks like game one's probably gonna go to Sean but that's only because Mark stumbled so bad on his mana yeah he stumbled very badly in, in the right. beginning. So there's a Worm Coil. Worm Coil playing around Vanalik. Yeah. Snapcaster Mage. Flashing back dissipate. So yep. exactly as you mentioned. And I think at the end of the turn, Sean's just gonna use a satchel. See what it is. Probably gonna be a land. Uh, yeah, looks it's like a land. it is. Comes into play. All right. I think that's one of the best ways to uh, get value out of those yeah, out of those satchels. Yeah. I'd rather it's pretty hit much like drawing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, of right. course, you just draw, draw a card. card and play a land. Like yeah. that seems so good. All right. And Sean playing Ponder, which can actually help set. Yeah, that exactly. Sort of thing yeah, up. whatever he wants. Look how much. I mean, Mark is a is a ramp deck, and he's I think has less land than Sean. Yeah, so he's gonna chump right there. So. So, so the, Snapcaster so, so, and Sapper. So, so get watch in. this now. If Mark would have played. Um, like if he would have attacked with the Nexuses, all right, he could actually almost kill Sean right now with with the land and with a Nexus. Like, am I not right? Uh, does he have the the Wolf yeah. Run? I'm pretty sure he's got the Wolf I Run think land, he right? Might. Yeah, he it might be right that there. right there. Yeah. Yeah. It was one of the first lands he played, I think. Yeah, it was it was Nexus Mountain Nexus. Wolf Run. That's what I thought. Yeah. So. Yeah. So and he could have gotten at least. I'm pretty sure it was two more poisons. So essentially, Sean should have been at, at least three poisons right here. All right, there's a primeval titan. And here, playing around Madeline. Yeah. So what's what's Sean's hand? So somebody said something about ratchet bomb for uh, for zero, but it does not kill lands. Yeah, it doesn't kill lands. Yeah. Right. So do do we know Mark's exact life? All right, so he's gonna go Snapcaster, and then he's gonna mana leak it anyway, just to tap Mark out. Mark's gonna pay. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, Mark, Mark's probably gonna fetch up two, two Nexuses at this point. I mean, like, what else does he really want? Right. Glimmer Post. Yeah, I guess Glimmer Post is probably good. Two of those. Yeah, that looks like what he went went with. So yeah. gains some life here, gives himself a little bit more time, and uh, you know, Primeval Titans, pretty scary, pretty threatening. But Sean has so much on board right now. Yeah, I, I think the Primeval Titan might have to block the Gideon, depending on the exact life total. If not, then Sean will just make the everybody attack Gideon, so he doesn't die to like the a Nexus. Yeah, yeah. 
So, I don't know. I felt that the early game was played slightly different. Mark might have been able to win the game. I mean, yeah, he, and if he, he, he might still be able to win. I guess the decision is how much do you lean on Inkmoth Nexus. And in the case where Mark was pretty pretty screwed on mana early... Um, he should have went all in. He, he, that would have been probably a, at least... At that point, when he had really nothing else to do. Yeah, there's Cause, really no. Because no. obviously, if Sean has seven lands and he's not doing anything, mm -hmm. his hand's going to be counter spells. So why are you playing right into his counter spells? All right, so everybody's going to have to attack Gideon, and then Sean plays Sean Sun Titan. Sean resolves. Sun Titan gets back. Did he get back a Ratchet Bomb? Yeah, that, that was like the only thing he could have got. Yeah. So. Is there like nothing in Sean's graveyard? <laughs> I think he's flashed yeah. back Mana Leak, dissipate, and uh, return the Ratchet and Bomb. Return the Ratchet Bomb. Yeah. yeah. So those were the uh, the three things. All right, here comes a Karn. Wow. Karn liberated. Wow. That's big. Yeah. And wow. We have a Druidic Satchel activation off of uh, Gideon from Sean, which does nothing. Shows Gideon doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Essentially, I mean, it gains a two life. That's, wow, that's Mark huge. might actually be able to win this game. Yeah, he's actually doing a great job. He, he's done a great job of running Sean out of counter spells. I mean, basically, Sean had four counter spells, and yeah. he hit what? Worm coil, worm coil. Uh, so four. It, it probably comes down to what's in actually Mark's hand. Yeah, he can. So he could go up to two, four, six, eight, ten. So he could, he could, he could have thirteen. He could have fourteen mana next turn. Is that correct? Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. No, he could have more. Eight. I see eleven lands in play. Is that that bird of paradise is in his graveyard? Or is yeah, that, yeah. Is that land? Like, is that his graveyard? Or yeah, is that that's his graveyard. Oh, okay. Yeah, something could attack to go to thirteen. Play a land fourteen. So he could have, he could have access to fourteen mana. So Mark so. uses Karn's ability. Yeah, to remove Sun Titan, exile Sun Titan, and swings with Primeval Titan. Yeah, so he's going to go get his last Glimmer Post at another Nexus. Or he's going to get a Wolf? Wait, how many that's a Kessig Wolf run, yeah. How many Glimmer Posts? Oh, yeah, that's... I see three Glimmer Posts? Yeah, yeah there it good, is. Yeah, okay. okay, he did get his last Glimmer Post. What? Wait, why wouldn't he get a, a Nexus? Uh, does he... How many Nexuses? He plays four he plays Nexus. Four, does yeah. Not? Um, like, what's the purpose of getting that second wolf run? Maybe he... I'm not sure why, why he would go with that over a wolf. Because he can only... Yeah, it's essentially, like, as having one and having two, is, there's, it's better just to have one and put all your mana into it. So... I mean, it, it, he could be playing around Ghost Quarter, but if there's a Ghost Quarter, it's just going to kill the Nexus that he... You know, like, he Ghost Quarter... Basically, if he gets... Uh, yeah, Sean does have the Ghost Quarter in play. Where's Ghost? I see Buried Ruin up top. Isn't oh, yeah. that Buried Ruin? Um, it might be yeah, Buried Ruin. Bur I think it's Buried Ruin. Okay. Which, so, if Sean has Ghost Quarter, he can, he can take his pick. You know, if, if he gets a Kessig Wolf Run here, it activates Nexus... And the wolf run. Yeah, I don't know. the wolf run targets Nexus. I guess, I guess. I guess we'll see how it plays out. I guess the thing is he's not going in the Nexus plan. He's going over. He's playing around Ghost Quarter, planning on. But he just, yeah. He's playing around Ghost Quarter, not worrying about Inkmoth Nexus plan. He's trying to just use Kessig Wolf Run for the trample on the. On yeah, not really though, because see, Gideon just took out the Titan. So Gideon kills Primeval Titan. Um. Karn goes away. Karn gets attacked down to zero. Yeah. So right now, Mark Morrison with tons of lands in play, including double Kessig Wolf Run and at least one Inkmoth Nexus. It's hard to tell uh, if he's got more than one. Um, and Sean has tons of land in play. Yeah, I think Mark has like 14, 14 lands or something. Something like that. It's At close to 14 or 15 lands. Yeah. Um, and activates Ink Moth Nexus. Swings at Sean. Sean says okay. And Mark now activates Kessig Wolf Run. Druidic Satchel. Shows a land. Gives, gives Sean a land. 
Uh, I don't understand. Well, I, I so. do not understand. So Sean used the Gideon to kill the Primeval Titan, but did not have an answer for Inkmot Nexus. Yeah. I'm kind of surprised uh, at like, that why not, why not plus the Gideon if you didn't have an answer to Inkmot Nexus. Yeah, you know? it did, yeah, it didn't really make sense at all. Um, um, Sean could have easily won that game. It, it, early in the game, if Sean just went turn 5 Gideon, he was just 100% winning this game. I feel that, that Sean is going to rewatch this game. Like We'll talk to Sean afterwards, but yeah. he'll rewatch it and he'll realize how easy it is he could have won that game. Yeah, I think um, I think we've seen both control players take a uh, situation where they have where they could have played more aggressively and win yeah. earlier. I mean, I, I don't know. But anyway, so so Mark wins game one miraculously after... Uh, after stumbling very, very early. Yeah. Yeah, this is... Uh, okay. So anyway, we'll go to sideboard and we'll see how they're going to sideboard. Sean is going to bring in two Oblivion Rings, most certainly. Uh, he is probably going to bring in the... Uh, I don't, he's definitely bringing in two Oblivion Rings, that's for sure. I would probably bring in the extra Dissipate as well. I feel like counters are really good versus this guy's deck that's just really slow and stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. um, what else do you think he's going to bring in? Is, it, is that it? Two, two rings to dissipate? Let's see. I can't really see him bringing in anything else. Yeah, it's... Alright, uh, this is a sideboard. Celestial Purge, Negate, Oblivion Ring, Surgical Extraction, and an extra Day of Judgment, Ratchet Bomb, Dissipate, Blaze Splicer, and Sun Titan. I mean, if he's playing Ghost Quarter, he can surgically extract the entire Ink Moth or Wolf Run kind of thing. If he, You know what I mean? If he, if he either kills an Ink Moth Nexus... Or uh, or ghost quarters it. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. It's it's, it's yeah. Loose, but it's gonna I'm be two blue like, rings and it dissipate for sure. Like like you agree on those three, he should bring in. I, I'm on I'm on with with the uh, the extra counter magic in the blue ring. Yeah, that seems seems All reasonable. Right. And Mark is going to bring in a six slime, Thrun. Definitely the Thruns. Uh, Let's see, he's got this ancient I mean, grudge for the uh, satchels. Do you think so? I, mean, I guess it depends on how much respect, how much he wants to respect the satchels. You know yeah. what I mean? Like personally, in this matchup, I would not respect the satchels that much because if Mark's gonna come out quick, he's gonna come out so quick with his mana ramp mm -hmm. that the satchel's not gonna do that much. It's not like Mark's playing like a blue eye control deck as well. I think the satchels shines in blue eye control matchups like mm -hmm. a mirror match, and it also shines in like a blue black. Yeah, other control. Yeah, exactly. Matchups, so. so, Mars kind of mana ramp. I actually take back the fact that Sean's going to win this tournament now. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I personally did not agree with not playing Gideon right there. Well, maybe that's what he's thinking about. Maybe he's thinking I should have been more aggressive. Yeah, it's just... You know? Yeah, a, a lot of times... I, you learn, you know, that's yeah, the thing. Yeah. I feel that players, once they see their opponent stumble on mana, they kind of feel like, oh, I should just play it really, really safe. And they kind of play it too safe that they... They kind of screw this, uh, themselves over and they lose the game because of that. Um, and uh, that's pretty much what happened. So, but uh, yeah, his sideboard, Mark's sideboard for everybody at home if you care. It's Ancient Grudge, uh, Reading Corruptor, uh, uh, Sword of Feast of Famine, Thrun, and Acidic Slime. That's, that's pretty uh, much a rundown of his. Yeah, he's got uh, Blasphemous Act. Yeah, sure, that's, a, that's another one. But uh, I actually kind of like Mark's deck. It seems pretty cool. He's got some early mana ramp. Um, and, uh, yeah, it seems okay. Yeah, it's interesting to see that Blasphemous Act. That's the one that uh, it costs yeah. eight and a red. It's, it's sorcery it's, that uh, costs one less for each uh, creature on the battlefield and does 13 damage to each creature. It's interesting pretty much a red Wrath of God, kind of. Yeah, really. Like, and limited, it usually costs, like, five mana, four or five, mm -hmm. you know? Um, but, uh... Against Sean's deck, it doesn't seem... Doesn't seem so ideal. Yeah, I, I guess Mark really wants it against like you know the creature-based decks. Right, absolutely. Uh, where they're gonna have like three or four creatures in play, so it's only gonna cost them you know five mana. Yeah, as I mentioned, tokens is a deck. So, yeah, it is. Uh, yeah. So there's there's the green white version of tokens that uh, seems to be pretty popular using like Gavany Township, uh, and then there's like Jerry actually wrote about it this week on uh, Star City Premium about the blue white version of tokens. There he is right there. Look, peeking over. I didn't even see oh, him. Jerry right Thompson. Wow. So, <laughs> I did not see him in a while. <laughs> the star of Jerry TV, actually. Yeah. <laughs> um, wrote about it, and it's, uh, you know, to, to actually be able to play uh, Moreland Haunt and Mana Leak. Does AJ TV still exist? 
AJTV, I believe, still exists. So we have AJTV, we have Jerry, Jerry TV, TV. Yeah. we have we have like HDTV. HD, H, we have HGTV at some point, maybe. Yeah, we have, we, <laughs> we have a lot of TVs. Um, but yeah, so SCGTV. Yeah, we do SCG Live. Yeah. We have Twitter. We have, we have Magic Cards. <laughs> Um, but yeah, we Magic the Gathering, and we have premium that we're going to give away. So, so that's good. Um, let's see. We I think we have some some sideboarding plans here. Three oh, we do. Wow. Okay. Here's a sideboarding plan. Let's see. Three Ratchet Bomb. One Think Twice. Day of Judgment. One Gideon uh, from from Sean coming in. Wait a minute. He had let's no. He's out. coming okay. out. So yeah. so Sean's bringing in two Oblivion Rings, a Blade Splicer, the two Surgical Extractions, yeah, and so. the Dissipate. So he is going with the O-rings and the dissipates, like you suggested, and the surgical extractions, as I mentioned. Yeah, and the um, extra blade splicer. And, a, and an extra blade splicer. Dude, yeah. you know, he's thinking about ratchet bombs. Ratchet bomb is such a bad card. I don't. It's I don't like it. I mean, I, I played it when it was when it came out in Scars, and I really haven't played it much since. People would like not it. play it. Okay, so the, I, I won a Moto PTQ, mm -hmm. and the Moto PTQ that I won, I first picked ratchet bomb in my draft, and I didn't even play ratchet bomb. That's how bad it is. I first picked it because there was nothing in the pack. Yeah, and you're just like it wasn't even open, good. Right? Yeah, it wasn't even really good and limited. It was just, it was just bad kind of. But uh, I feel like yeah, it's just a card you're always gonna board out. Oblivion ring on the other hand is just good. Yeah, it just kills cost. Ki yeah, it's, I don't know. These people, well, these people need to read more Jerry Thompson's articles so they can learn. Well, my feeling about Ratchet to, Bomb is obviously good if I, I think it's fine. Uh, if there are that many like tokens decks, if you can play it, and if you're trying to hit a lot of zero casting cost stuff or one casting cost stuff, but, but you know, obviously it's just it gets worse the more you want. And you know, day the, judgment the, does the same thing versus the tokens because you're killing creatures, you're killing token creatures. Like say if there was like some one mana artifact that you had to kill or something, mm -hmm. but it's really not. Yeah, I, I just think it's more of a sideboard card in a in this particular metagame when tokens is a deck, but I wouldn't main deck it. Right. Um, and I think it's just, it's so, in my experience, this is just yeah. me, I, it, in my experience, it's so slow, it's always been a card where I've been like, well, this when I need an answer, this is not it. Yeah. Um, right. So Sean goes with the turn one island and yeah. ponder. His hand right now is planes, planes, ponder, dismember, surgical extraction. So I mean, his, hand, his opening hand was good, a double ponder. And it looks like he's going to keep the cards. It looks like a, like a, Oblivion Ring, a Snap Caster Mage, or something else possibly. And, and, a, and a land, yeah. So Mark Chrome has Coast. a uh, turn one forest and passes back to Sean. Sean turn two, Sea Chrome Coast, second ponder of the game yeah. for Sean. Now we do have uh, the sideboard plans for Mark. Looks like four Palladium Mirror, two Solemn Simulacrum, two Viridian Emissaries came out. Uh, two Thrones, two Ancient Grudge, two Sword of Feast and Famine, one Viridian Corrupter, and one Acidic Slime came in. Alright, so Sean uh, shuffles up this time. And let's see what Sean draws. Sean draws another Seacrow Coast. And oh, and a third, third ponder. ponder. Alright, so, so yeah, it was a third ponder. All right. So I think I saw a Sun Titan, but I could be wrong. Alright, Sean passes the turn. Oh, he's got a Blaze Blaster for next turn, yeah. So Mark has a. Uh, Turn two, forest. Hopefully, it's a rampant growth or something. And yeah, rampant growth. Ramp growth. Oh, awesome. So, so he's probably gonna go fetch up a mountain here. He's only got two in the deck, so yeah, so he may as well set himself up at this point to have it. Yep, yeah, there it is. is. There's a mountain. And uh, Marshall's gonna pass a turn after that. And, and, and on Sean's turn, Sean's probably gonna play the Sea Chrome Coast and then a Blaze Splicer to start to get aggro. Because yeah. he didn't get aggro last game, so maybe he learned his lesson. And uh, I don't, if he even has anything in his hand, yeah, that's where he's going. Yep. I'm going to say, I don't even know if he has any uh, any defensive cards in his hand at this point, so going aggro seems like the best plan. Yeah. So, so, so right now, the best card for Mark to play is probably just like a soul. Oh, well, he doesn't. Fear the Suns from Mark. Yeah. And uh, is he short on mana? Is that it? Yeah, wow. He yeah, does that, not have a land drop. That's pretty unfortunate for Mark. Because right now, if Mark actually went like Solemn, he could have just pulled even like further he, ahead. Really, yeah. Yeah. yeah, at this point, his rampant growth just was his land drop. Yeah. He had to ramp and growth to just hit a land drop. So, uh, but Sphere of the Sun's pseudo land drop as well. Yes. Um, Snapkeeper, uh, Snapcaster Mage. Snapcaster Mage flashes back a ponder for Sean after getting in there for four with yeah. the Blade Splicer and Golem. And, and Sean actually does have a Sun Titan in his hand. So, as long as, long as Sean hits his land drop, uh, for the next two turns, he's going to just bust out a uh, Sun Titan. And I think he's ensuring that now with these Ponders. Like, honestly, is 
in Sean's deck, like how much better is Sun Titan than Frost Titan? Like, like, like what is? What is he getting back? With he's the getting Sun back Blade Splicer, like Snapcaster. Me, yeah, he can. He I can get back Satchels. He can get back Ratchet Bombs. Even though we're I mean, not I mean, I feel sometimes Sun, Sun Titan doesn't even do that much. Um, Oblivion Ring only if they were like yeah. blown up or countered or something. All right, so Mark misses another land drop, but drops a, a Thrun. Yeah, so Thrun for Mark will make things a little bit more threatening. Yeah, but, I mean, Sean has a Gideon now. Sean drops Gideon. Yeah, so Sean's going to go Gideon uh, into... Plus two. And yeah, then, and then he's going to play Sun Titan next turn, as long as he has a land. Which he doesn't have a land, but Sean's hand is just so good anyway. It's like Dismember, Sun Titan. I mean, the Surgical Distraction seems like it does nothing. And Sean's like game plan and against Mark's deck. I don't really understand why he brought that in. So I play Surgical Extraction in Blue Black, but I like it as a uh, kind of I, I use it in a way as kind of a Gitaxian probe that also kind of gets rid of something troublesome. Like I, I've used it on somebody's Snapcaster Mage just because like I want to see what's in their hand, and I get rid of their Snapcasters, and I can you know. Is kind anybody of, else not a fan of the thumbs up that Sean gives? When he's like completely tapped out, I'm fine with the thumbs up. You're fine, okay. <laughs> All right. And uh, so, so Mark just rampant growths, and uh, let's see if he has another play for the turn. All right. So there it is, the ancient grudge cyborg tech. Yeah, I guess ancient grudge does kill the the token as well. Yeah. So Thrun comes over. Plays with Gideon a little bit. I think I might have I might have chumped with that blaze placer. Wouldn't you chump with that blaze placer just to protect the Gideon a little well, bit longer? I mean, he can do well, it here protect too. with the Gideon, but also it, he has Sun Titan in his hand. So why not get that oh, blaze right, placer yeah. in the yard? Good call. You know, what he saying? goes with the next, another blade splicer here. Yeah, but I th yeah, I don't know. Um, does he? He just doesn't have. Does he have the land though for the Sun Titan? No, he doesn't have the land this turn. Yeah, I didn't think so. So maybe that's what he was thinking. I'm just gonna. Play another, uh, play another blade splicer here. So yeah. it, it seems like the Twitter family loves Ratchet Bomb for some reason. Yeah, some people like it. Some people yeah. agreed with us though. Okay, I guess it's mixed emotions on Ratchet Bomb. If I offended anybody about Ratchet Bomb, I don't apologize. <laughs> hey, everybody's got their own opinion. Yeah. That's, that's fine. I, I'm with you. I think it's too slow. Yeah. I think it's fine in the sideboard, but not main deck. All right, so uh, let's see what Mark's play is going to be for the turn. So Mark with five lands, a Thrun, and a Sphere of the Suns on board. Now uh, casts a Sword of Feast and Famine yeah. into Sean's two open mana. Yeah, but it appears to have resolved, and Thrun picks it up. So yeah. Troll with Swords, that's an old uh, old classic there from yeah. original Mirrodin block where it was Troll Ascetic. But yeah, he flashbacks um, Ancient Grudge, and now he chumps with the Blade Splicer. There's a think twice. Is so Sean able to, uh, to prevent yeah. that sword from killing Gideon at this point? Uh, that's thrown with the sword. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Sean drew a six land, so now he's gonna drop Sun Titan. So plus two on the Gideon again. Protecting I wouldn't. Himself. I wouldn't even plus two. I would just activate an attack. Why would you not attack for nine there? I don't understand. That's a good point. Is it not? Is not a good place to deal your opponent nine damage? You know what I mean? He, is he? He's afraid of what Mark is able to do. Here, uh, what would he be? What would he be able to do? You're right. Like and he's he got to get through a sun and a blade splicer, splicer and a token. Yeah. yeah. I think. I think you're right. I think the uh, the attack would have been better. Would have been better. Yeah. I'm just trying to think it out here a little bit, but it yeah. does seem like Sean's. But, but but look at Sean's hand. He has a bunch of cards that are, are kind of useless. Like the satchel is just too slow and useless in this matchup. I feel. I feel the same thing with surgical extraction. Like, the way Sean is trying to attack and, and win the game, he's, he's more of going on an aggressive route rather than these defensive, sometimes useless cards in his hand. All right, Mark plays a Primeval Titan. He's going to go get an Ink Moth Nexus and the, uh, the, the Wolf Run land. Yep, Kessig Wolf Run and Ink Moth Nexus from the Primeval Titan. Yeah. Um, now, Sean, Sean can extract those Primeval Titans if he manages to kill it. That seemed to be like the plan against Valakut a lot, was memory side against uh, Primeval Titan. I don't know that it's that good. I don't know that it's as good against uh, against Wolfron. As I was saying earlier, I feel like they have better, like more versatile answers. But Mark isn't isn't playing the traditional version. He's playing more of a, an artifact heavy version. No, uh, no Garrick. All right. So in Mark's deck. now Sean's attacking with everything. 
Sun Titan does not tap. All right, good. All right, and that's game. And yeah, Sean able to take it down by getting aggressive there. Yeah. When uh, when when faced down with Mark's Titan and thrown with sword. So. Yeah. All right. So they're shuffling up for game three. Uh, I mean, I have to give this match to Mark because he's on the play, and uh, I'm not a big fan of how Sean currently sideboarded. Yeah, it's uh, he was able to take that game down, but it's funny because it seemed like Mark stumbled more game one. Oh, but he still did. won. Yeah, he definitely did. But the reason why Sean won that game because Sean didn't play like draw, go, and do nothing for the entire game. Yeah. He actually he played a blaze splicer yeah. and he played a Gideon on turn five. He got aggressive and he won because of it. Because that's what you have to do against these slow decks. I mean, if your opponent's playing Karn and all these like six and seven drops, obviously you want to develop your board before those cards come out. Yeah. Yeah, and the blade splicers help. That's exactly what uh, we were saying earlier, and he he was saying to us earlier about blade splicer being, you know, some of these decks that you're playing against, you want to be the beatdown. Yeah. And I guess maybe he learned from game one that he should be at least more more aggressive with it than he was early. So, um, what's evil presence? Somebody tweeted us in. It's the one that's it's like a spreading seas, but it turns it into a swamp. Oh, uh, it's like two mana, uh, and, they, and they lose two life or something. Wrong. When it becomes yeah, it tapped. There it is. Uh, oh. Yeah, Enchant Land, en Enchanted Land is a swamp. It costs one black. Uh, that, that, uh, that's the like spreading seas. It doesn't draw you. A yeah, card. It's, it's it's too much card disadvantage. Yeah, I'm not a fan of that card, but good good tweet. It's like an idea, you know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, I mean, yeah. I'm trying to think. Basically, you're not costing them any mana. You know, so you may be better off playing Ghost Quarter. You know what I mean? If you're gonna just let them still have that land because Ghost Quarter yeah. does something similar where it like yeah. gives them a land. I mean, yeah, I mean, it gives yeah. them a basic. Yeah, Ghost Quarter is just better because Ghost Quarter doesn't take up a slot in your deck, and you can Ghost Quarter yourself. It's it's more versatile than right. Yeah. All right, but again, I think Mark should not be bringing in the Ancient Grudges. That's just my personal opinion. I think he should just bring in the Thrones, the Acidic Slimes, and I guess the Swords are pretty good. Um, yeah, the, the only thing about the Swords is it's pro black and green which Sean's not playing yeah, exactly. anything of and uh, it could always just get chumped by like a snap uh, caster mage I keep calling it snap keeper mage because <laughs> Matt Sperling wrote that on my wall just because I just always snap keep all my hands yeah um, <laughs> so you are the snap keeper mage is that what it is yeah if I ever won snap the invitational keep. snap keeper mage would be a good a good name for, for my card yes. to say the least when you design a card just call it that yeah Nobody will get it confused with Snap Caster Mage. Yeah, definitely. Um, one other thing, Ghost Quarter, good with Sun Titan, as someone mentioned on Twitter. Yeah, definitely, yeah. But I, I just feel that sometimes Sun Titan doesn't do that much. I really like Frost Titan. Nobody plays Frost Titan anymore. I think it's good. Well, it's good when there's so many Primeval Titans running around. And uh, I know Mike Flores has mentioned it as being a possibility in his... Uh, some of his recent articles because he's playing that blue red deck. Have you seen that? No, I didn't see it. He's uh, it's blue red control, and he's using uh, Snapcaster Mage with Brimstone Volley. Okay. So obviously that's just ten damage right there. If you can play the Brimstone Volley for five and then play Snapcaster and flash it back. Sure. Seems very good. Yeah. Uh, as just just one of the, the winning interactions in that deck, hitting somebody for ten off of off of those just two cards seems very good. Um, and uh, he, Frost Titan being one of the cards that he was considering for the deck. I don't know that he actually played with it, but uh, it's definitely something that he's he's considered. Yeah. There's just a lot of uh, a lot of kind of good cards available for control decks right now. Being if you're playing the blue black, you have Grave Titan. If you're playing blue white, you have Sun Titan, and both have options to go Consecrated Sphinx, Worm Coil Engine, Frost Titan either, and Frost Titan. Right. Yeah. So Frost Titan seems to be. As good as it is, it's almost kind of the last, you know, in, in line for those slots. Th doesn't that guy Mark look like some guy from, like, a movie? I don't know what movie. I don't know. He does, uh... He kind of looks like one of those guys from a movie. He has movie star good looks, is that what you're saying? Yeah, he, he kind of does. <laughs> you know, and, and he's kind of he's modest about it. He shrugs, like, yeah, you know, I could play in a movie or two. Why not? So it looks like Sean brought in two negates uh, for Think Twice. Took out two things twice, brought in two negates. 
seems reasonable against. Uh, I feel like Nagate's another card that's like not that good. He's he's on the draw, and uh, something you want to negate is the rampant growth in turn two or the sphere, but you can't because you're on the draw. I think I think I think Nagate's not good. Yeah, like what can he negate? He can negate the zenith, which he hasn't even seen. I don't think yeah. this game. He, nothing. Nothing. Zenith batter skull. Hey, can you unplug school. my uh, my charger? Oh yeah. All right, cool. All right, so they're so they're getting ready for game three. They're laying out their seven cards. I, I personally feel Marsh going to take this take this game down. And uh, he draws his opening seven. He's kind of going pretty slow. It looks like he might not like his hand, or maybe he's just pretending. If you can't get it, it's okay. That's fine. Oh, you got it. All right, yeah, good. I think I got it. All right. Somebody said you could negate swords. But I, yeah, I mean, of course you could negate the sword, but it's like, there's like four cards you can negate or whatever. Total. All right, are they keeping? All right, they're keeping. All right, turn one, forest for Mark. He passes the turn. And here comes a ponder, it looks like. Yep. So we can't see what cards he is thinking about, but uh, I think he is deciding to keep, and uh, yeah, he does keep. And passes the turn. So it looks like Sean wanted to get an island there. That's what it looked like. All right. All right, so Mark plays a Nexus and passes. So he didn't, he didn't have a turn two play, which is kind of sad for Mark. I wonder if he top decked that Nexus or... Yeah, uh, I, mean, I, I thought the same thing. Because if he played a turn one, he could have yeah. turned two attack. It's probably a Palladium Mirror. Yep, yep it is. There's Palladium and it resolves. Mark off of a mountain there's dismember. and dismember. Sean kind of gave a shrug like you got me. And then yeah. he dismembered, which... You know, they're not 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 too necessary. Yeah, it's, like, yeah. <laughs> it's not like Mark. Could have, yeah, dismembered. it's not like Mark Mark could have done anything. But anyway, let's see what uh, what Sean has for his turn three. There's a snapcaster so on gonna, the top for Sean. Oh, so he plays Satchel. Okay, Satchel on turn three. All right. So Mark can go Forest Thrun here. I mean, Forest Solemn or Land Solemn would be really yeah, good. Yeah, guys doesn't have a forest there, so it's gonna be. He's going with. The Ancient Grudge, okay. Ancient All right, maybe these Ancient the Grudges are good. So he's respecting the satchel anyway. Yeah. So Ink Moth next is in for a poison. Yeah. I want to see what like that Ancient Grudge like would have been. You know, like what did he take out to actually bring in those? Yeah. Do you think Mark maybe took out his Solemns? He did actually cut some. How many did he was he playing? Main? He was playing four Solemns. Okay, he did cut two of them. Really? Uh, in I, round. I feel I like mean, I would I would much two. rather have a Solemn than like Ancient Grudge like. If Sean's going to get extra lands, but I'm going to get extra lands and I'm the ramp deck, I would rather get extra lands. I wouldn't really care oh, that. But Interestingly, Mark actually sided out two more thrones. So he's only got one that he sided in. All right, well, Sean's stuck on land in the meantime. Yeah, so Mark actually doesn't have the thrones. He took them back out. He only sided in two and he sided them back out for game three. Yo, right now, Mark just needs to go beat down a Nexus. This is how you win versus these control decks. You just go beat down a Nexus. Right, like take advantage no, don't, of it. You, so oh. he's got right. Worm it's, Coil it's, Legend. It's, I don't, I don't understand. Yeah, if, if you have Nexus and your your opponent is, is mana screwed here, all you have to do is build up your poison counters and then they eventually have to tap out for something and then you play your spell. Like when they're on six or seven poison counters, they're gonna be like, I'm gonna have to tap out. I don't, I don't understand the, this this line of play. Yeah, I mean, all, the, uh, yeah, this all are capitalizing on Nexus yeah. as well. We saw this actually with Brian Sondag, who ended up winning the tournament. But Mike, uh, Mike and I, Mike Flores, last yeah. time in Nashville. Well, meanwhile, uh, Madalik hits the. Uh, what was it? Mark just tried to uh, Green Sun Zenith. Yeah, yeah. it's hard, hard to tell, but um, Green Sun Zenith attempts to resolve. Sean has Madalik, but um, all right, and there's. Uh, Dude, snap battle keeps, yeah, Snapcaster base. Snapcaster will flashback that Madalik. So yeah. Mark goes threat, 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 and uh, so, Sean has answers for all of them. Dissipate, yeah. snap, dissipate Madalik, Snapcaster. Yeah. So, so so right now, the way I would have played it, Sean would have been at like five poison counters or so, right? Four or five. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. And, then, and, and, then, and then, God forbid, if, if, if I don't even know. I mean, Sean's stuck on four lands. Like, what is Sean going to do? Well, he attacked with Snapcaster last turn, and here looks like we're going on the uh, the Nexus beatdown. Mark arranging his lands. No, never mind. Primeval Titan. I thought he was going to activate the Nexus, swing in, and uh, and activate Kessing Wolf Run. All right. So, but instead, he uh, he right. resolves the Primeval Titan. Yeah. So this is probably a game right here. Yeah, it's definitely. Sean's already under plenty of pressure, and yeah. Primeval Titan. Well, Sean's, Sean's theoretically under pressure from the 
Ink Moth Nexus Kessig Wolf run that Mark already had on the table. Yes. Uh, Mark adds to that pressure with the Primeval Titan. So next turn, Mark can Mark can attack from two different angles here. Yeah, I mean, I mean, this game's definitely in Mark's favor. He's probably like ninety. He, he's probably ninety-five percent chance to win right now. Right. The somebody mentions about uh, Sean flashing back this member. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he can flash back this member to take out the Ink Moth Nexus, but you're forcing him to do that and use yeah. that. Uh, does he have another Snapcaster? Because if not, then if he would have used that, then Mark would have resolved... Yeah, I the, mean, the uh, game would have been different, but... He, he would have resolved the battle sphere because right. there would have been no Snapcaster. So, yeah. Sean now has a, an Oblivion Ring for the Primeval Titan, but might not matter. Sean attacks with Snapcaster Mage and passes back to Mark. Sean was able to hit his fifth land, though. Is, is he dead on board, Sean? Uh... Kind of depends. I don't know. He doesn't have many good answers to Ink Moth Nexus besides Ghost Quarter, which he does not have in play. Um, he's just got this member. So it looks like Mark's going to cast something here. I mean, he's got this member, Ghost Quarter. Or it might just be. He's tapping five. Yeah, he is. He's got no good answers to Ink Moth Nexus besides Ghost Quarter. He's tapping six. Is it a. Wow, another Titan, yep, all right, that resolves. So, Mark looks like he's got this match at this point. Second Primeval Titan resolves in consecutive turns. Mark gets an Ink Moth Nexus and a Glimmer, Glimmer Post. Post. Or Glimmer, is it, yeah, I was gonna mix up Glimmer Post, Cloud Post, Glimmer Void. Yeah, Glimmer Void, that's what I was thinking too. Glimmer Void's the one from, uh, from the original Mirrodin Blocker. Actually, yeah. add colors. So I, I think I think Nexus is going to get in for one here. Yeah. Bringing Sean up to two poison counters. And I mean, I don't think there's anything Sean could actually really do right here. He finally drew a six land, so he could play Sun Titan, but that's that does nothing. Yeah, the loss of Condemn for Blue Wait, White why, gives them. Why is Mark not blocking with his his Primeval Titan there? This member playing around this member. So Sean's like trying to bluff this member, and he's just making it too obvious, kind of. Yeah, I mean it's. It looks to me like that Mark is playing around this member, but uh, Sean resolves Gideon. Yeah. Which will protect him for at least a turn here. Yeah, I mean Titan still goes getting more lands, you know. Yeah. So what I was saying earlier about Brian Sondag, uh, Mike and I saw him have multiple Nexuses in play that he could have just been attacking with just rather than trying to hit in one kill in one hit with a nexus and a wolf run just yeah. keep attacking with multiple nexuses and uh you know if he has a doom blade fine like let him doom blade one and the other nexus gets in or something what, what do you mean this member you're talking about uh, no i mean like not in this match but we were talking oh, about sure, in uh, yeah, yeah. sondag's match versus valenti actually yeah it ended up being a draw i think that uh, that match, that round that we're talking about. But. Yeah, I mean, this is definitely good to watch because you learn a lot. Because you get to see a match from like a different perspe uh, perspective, mm -hmm. and you get to hear like our thoughts too. So you could definitely le learn how to play these decks rather than just like playing so much on Moto. You watch like a GG uh, uh, SG Live, and you get to uh, yeah, you know, it's learn, a, yeah. So, some more uh, just more experience in a, in a kind of different way. Maybe not playing, but trying to think how you would play it. So Primeval Titan attacks Gideon, presumably, gets a Rootbound Crag and I believe a Kessig Wolf run. Yeah. Um. Uh, but yeah, Sean really, like, that's something now I'm, uh, the, the biggest hole I see in his deck is that I feel like Wolf run decks are really popular right now and he really doesn't have much of an answer to Ghost Quarter, I mean to uh, Ink Moth Nexus other than Ghost Quarter and Dismember. He's got two Dismember in the entire 75. Yeah, I mean... Three Ghost Quarter. Yeah. I mean, personally, uh, you could... Uh, yeah. I mean, with, with Nexus plus the uh, plus the Trample ability, it's tough for him to stop. Yeah, exactly. So, uh, Gideon goes down, and Mark resolves Green Sun Zenith for a third Primeval Titan. Yeah. Which, uh, this is just whew, overwhelming. I think he's got, like, all his lands in play. Th yeah, he's got, he just gets Mountain and Wolf run here. Could you pass me a water? Yeah, sure, yeah. Um, thank you. Thank you. Alright, so Mark shuffling up. Um, I mean, I don't even know what... I mean, a Day of Judgment wouldn't do anything. 
they, yeah, see, that's... It's, it's because of Nexus. Is. Right. It's, yeah. Nexus is actually... Ink Moth Nexus is so good. I think Jerry said that on Jerry yeah, TV. Good, yeah. Block the Snapcaster Mage. Snapcaster. Like, it's chumped, and yeah, he does not have the Like, just on principle, point. don't let, like, Sean bluff you too damage. Right, you know again, it's the situation we were saying earlier. It's like, bluff and call their bluff. Like, okay, you're going to you're gonna bluff this member? Yeah. Like, what's the worst that can happen? He dismembers your, your Primeval Titan, and you still have another one there. You still have Ink Moth Nexus and Kessig Wolf Run. Multiple Nexuses, multiple Wolf Runs at this point. Like, there's no reason that you need to fear losing your Primeval Titan. All right, in this game, so uh, Mark go. Morrison uh, takes it down, and yeah, Sean think, loses. But I think I, this, this may be one of the reasons that Blue Black is so good right now. If Wolf Run is so popular, Blue Black matches up pretty well against it. Yes, yes, but I, I feel that Sean could have uh, taken the match. Yeah, I mean, I, I felt Sean should have won game one, and he did win game two. So that may have been. Yeah, and that and that could, that could have been it right there. Um, and I, I didn't really like it, like. Okay, so before the game started, I said Negate is probably just some bad card. And then he died with Negate in the 